Hey viewers, both new and old. Welcome to GTech. And if you've been on my channel before, or maybe if you haven't, me and my friends go to Micro Center a lot. Micro Center is a computer and electronics store that has several locations throughout the United States. And Micro Center is basically famous for their absolutely fantastic deals. But it's come to my attention just how many deals that this company pumps out. Like you can get ridiculous savings on parts. So I'm gonna show you firsthand just how fantastic of a deal you can get from shopping at Micro Center as opposed to buying your parts at many, many different online retailers having them all shipped to you, because then you're also paying for shipping. Now, first things first, this is not a sponsored video. If it was sponsored by Micro Center, I'd probably cry. So today, I'm gonna be trying to hit a $1,000 budget, which seems to be mostly the average when it comes to people building new computers. I know a lot of people try leaning more towards the budget area of computer building, and a lot of people go towards the high end, but the vast majority tend to group in that $1,000 middle range. And hitting that $1,000 price tag gets you good price to performance while also providing a good upgrade path down the line. So we're gonna go ahead and do custom PC builder right here. Now, the good part about this is that everything, you can get every single component, look, CPU, motherboard, RAM, case, power supply, all this good stuff. All of this is from their inventory. You know what they have, what they don't have, what's out of stock, things that are on sale. So to hit that $1,000 price point, let's start off getting the biggest chunk of money out of the way, which should always be your video card if you're building a gaming PC. Now, a video card should typically be around 30 to 40% of your budget. If you really want to stretch it, you can even hit 50% of your budget, but that's kind of going to jip you on all of your other components. So you might lose out on cores. That's a big thing. You might lose out on 16 gigs of RAM, you're probably going to get bumped down to 8. Not that 8's a bad thing, but as we get more and more demanding games, 16's kind of the way that the market's going. To start it all off, let's price accordingly. We're going to go $300 to $400 range, and let's also hit the $400 to $500 range. $500's going to be our absolute max. At the very low end, we can either do a 1660 Ti, or an RX 5700 XT. So that's 30% of our budget right there. I'm seeing a lot of 1660 Ti's. Here we go, we're seeing 2060s. That's for our three, there you go, $340 right here. Saving 30 bucks down from 370. And after a rebate, you can get that down to 320. That's not a bad deal. 5700s, 2060s. Let's see, are there 2060 Supers? Here we go. And that's actually a good jump up from our 2060s. The 2060 Supers, I believe, perform more closely to 2070s. If you wanted to save a little bit of money, you could probably just do the RTX 2060. Not a big deal. Because look, even right here, you're saving 10 bucks already, and you can save another 20 bucks after a rebate. Now, do I want to do the Zotac one, or do I want to do the Oris one? Oris, hold on a sec. Look at this. Wow. Perfect. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, we can actually go through other pages. Let's see kind of what else we can... Oh, okay, I see. This will range more into our $500 max budget. So what is the absolute highest? It looks like 2070s are going to be our best bet for a $500 card. But I honestly think that's kind of pushing it. We could do a 2060 Super, which has a pre-overclock applied to it for $450. That's about 45% of our budget. Or we could do a 2060 Super, which is overclocked. There we go. For 30 bucks off, 440. You know what? I think we're gonna do that. 44% is a little bit more palatable than 50% of our budget. So I'm going to select that one. The CPU is basically the second most important component for a gaming computer, right next to the graphics card. You don't want them bottlenecking each other. You want them to be roughly on par with each other. So if you look right here, we can see some absolutely fantastic deals already. A 2700X for $140. That's $180 off. And you know what? The 2700X, I know for a fact, is one of the CPUs that you can get with a motherboard bundle. And what that does is I believe it takes $20 off of a motherboard, sometimes $30. I just put a 2700X that I got from Micro Center in my ITX VR PC, which you can see up here, and I paid $150 for that. So I know right now Micro Center is doing some sick deals on AMD processors. Like you can get a, here you go, 2600X for $80. That is down from $210. If you're looking for a sick mid-range system, that's honestly a good way to go, 2600X. So next we're gonna go with the motherboard. Micro Center's actually got some 
fantastic boards, like right here, $60 board. You bundle that with a CPU that's eligible for the $20 bundle deal, and you're getting a $40 motherboard right there. Of course, it's an A320 board, and A320 is kind of the lowest end chipset on the AM4 platform, but if you're throwing something like a 3200G, 3000G in there, like a real budget system, that might not be a bad idea. We're gonna see a lot of MATX boards here because they're physically smaller than ATX, which means it costs less money to make. But eventually when you go up to, say, an ITX board, they end up costing more money because you're packing so many features on such a small area. Here we go, B450 Tough Pro. It's probably eligible for that $20 bundle deal, meaning we'd get this board for $80 down from $120. Or here we go, we could even splurge a little bit more, go with an X470 Pro board. Yeah, like, see, here's an MITX board right here. It's B450, and it's retailing for $120. Whereas there are literally X470 boards, full ATX, retailing for $110. $90 after the $20 bundle deal. Probably gonna go with the X470 board. We can upgrade our processor later. If you end up building the system yourself, you'll have an X470 board ready for upgrade. Say we throw a 2700X in the build, or say you update the BIOS score with a 3700X, 3900X. Okay, so right now we're at 629.97 plus tax. We got $370 to do RAM, case, power supply, SSD, and quite possibly hard drive. But we got the important parts out of the way. So let's go on to RAM next, just because it's down in the list. And ideally, Ryzen really likes its RAM speed, so we're gonna minimize us at 3200 megahertz and then we'll go up to say 3600 or if we've got the money for it maybe 4000 although i highly doubt it because we need to save money for the other parts let's set it at dual channel so we've got four ram slots on our board so we can do two sticks of eight two sticks of four maybe if price is really that big of an issue although i don't think it will be oh here we go 3200 megahertz 16 gigs, dual channel. I think I might stick with the Crucial Ballistics, but let's keep taking a look and see what we can do. I don't think we're gonna get anything RGB-wise in this build, because I don't wanna shorthand myself and have to go back and make adjustments. Yeah, see, here's Vengeance RGB Pro, 87. We're paying, what was that, a $20 premium? Yeah, we're paying $20 extra to get an RGB set of memory. We could do the Geo Super Loose, but I think we're gonna take it easy and just go with the 16 gig of Ballistic Sport LT. And that's actually gonna help us with, say, future-proofed compatibility. If we throw a CPU cooler in here, a new CPU cooler, other than the Wraith Spire, since we have low-profile memory, we won't have cooler compatibility issues. So I'm going to start off with a SSD. And I'm just gonna go two and a half inch. And SSD prices have come down ridiculously. Like look right here, we've got a one terabyte 860 Evo for 150 bucks. I have one of these in my personal system. But if we go with something like that, we probably won't be able to squeeze a hard drive in our budget. And now we definitely don't wanna go with something like a 120 gig SSD. I threw one of these in the flipper system that I made a video on, you can see up here. And ideally I would have liked to throw a bigger SSD in there, but I wanted to minimize the amount of money that I was actually spending. Because like I said in that video, I wasn't originally planning on selling the peripherals with that system and would have made even less of a profit. Okay, so if we really wanted to go one terabyte, we can get an inland one for 87 bucks. That's $32 off right now. That's literally half the price of the 860 Evo. I honestly don't think I can pass up the $32 savings though on this one terabyte SSD. So I think I'm gonna throw that one in the build. On to the case and the power supply. Now, the case isn't that big of a deal. It's just the box you gotta look at. So you can honestly go with the single cheapest case that Micro Center sells. Because quite frankly, that's kind of what ties the whole build together. It's just something you have to look at. And if you don't like the look of your system, you can always put it on the floor, you can put it in the closet. You probably shouldn't do that because you need airflow in your gaming system. But it's honestly subjective. And if someone doesn't like the look of your case, well then that sucks for them. They have no say. Now, unlike PC Part Picker, Micro Center's component picker doesn't have a wattage reader. So you don't get an estimated wattage that your system's gonna use. However, we threw a 2060 and a 2600X in this build. Quite honestly, I think the build's gonna use less than 500 watts, but you still wanna have a lot of headroom. Whenever I'm building a gaming system, I always, always pick 80 plus bronze or higher efficiency rating because I know gaming systems can use a lot of power, 
and I figure why not give your system the cleanest power you can, the most efficient power. Especially if you like live with your parents and they're the ones who pay the electricity bill. You don't want them asking why you racked up $300 on the electricity bill with your new gaming system. There's kind of an inflation on power supplies recently, so it's gonna be a little bit hard finding something super duper good. And especially something like a fully modular power supply that's gonna charge us a little bit. Like, look, the cheapest one they have is 80 bucks. So I think we're gonna have to dumb it down to semi-modular. And already, we're going from $80 to $60 right there. But I think this right here, the EVGA 600BQ, is not a bad power supply. It's $64, 80 plus bronze, 600 watt, semi-modular. And if you look at the power supplies around it, I don't think we're gonna be able to get anything that's 80 plus gold rated until you reach the $90 range. And that's kind of what I was shying away from. Actually, for $5 more, we can get a 650 watt. You know what, I'm gonna do the 650 watt. That'll just give us a little bit of headroom. Now let's see what our final price is. 855 plus tax, that's not bad. That leaves us 150 roughly for a case, but I'm not sure how much tax is gonna be. So I'm gonna try and set a $100 limit on our case. Now $100 is not a small amount for a case. Like I said, you can go sort by literally the lowest price and find the cheapest case that Micro Center sells, which in this case is the H510. Really? I thought Micro Center would've, oh, that makes sense. The really cheap cases that Micro Center sells are usually an ATX. So it looks like we can actually get a half decent case with that price. Now, of course, if you are going more expensive, you're gonna want more important features, more airflow, maybe you want RGB lighting, tempered glass. So something like this Corsair Carbide 200R, while it may be good for just kind of an office PC, you're not really gonna wanna pay $90 for it if you can get something like the Land Cool 2 in both, look, black and white for roughly the same price. And those cases come with RGB and tempered glass, and those are kind of your 2020 flagship tier case specifications. Now, as we get up to $100, we can start seeing we're getting like the H510i, the 275R, but I don't think we wanna go much higher than that. We have $150 left in our budget. Like I said, I'm not sure how bad tax is gonna be. So I honestly might just go with the H510 for $70. Or actually, let's see. Here we go, Lee and Lee 205. You're saving 30 bucks on that. Let's take a look at the inside of the case. Now, if this sort of thing floats your boat, you're fine with it by all means go ahead and pick it. But it looks fairly closed off. Like this is one of the reasons I didn't personally go with the H510 or the H500 in my personal build because the airflow just looks very cut off. Like there's not a lot of air going into it. So I think I might actually splurge for the Land Cool 2 for 90 bucks because let's face it, it's got tempered glass and RGB, which like I said, are two very important features nowadays in 2020, but they also come with case fans, which can be really important if your case doesn't have them. If you're putting a 2060 Super overclocked, mind you, and a 2600X, but just say the stock cooler, you're gonna want that extra airflow going through your case. So let's take a look at our final build. And that came out to 945.93 plus tax. Now, if you really wanted to, you could say, throw an RGB strip in there, even though it has RGB lighting in the front. You could throw more fans in there with your $50 extra. Now, if you didn't believe me when I said Micro Center had some absolutely fantastic deals, I put this same exact build into PC Part Picker, which often looks for the cheapest price from every retailer it can find. In this case, Amazon had the cheapest price for all these components, and as you can see, the SSD in the case were not available on PC Part Picker. Even with those already discounted Micro Center prices, this build still came out to $1,056. That is over $100 more than our Micro Center system. Now, of course, you're gonna have to figure out the tax yourself by either A, buying the parts, or B, just kind of throwing it into a calculator, figure out what your state tax is. In my case, my state's tax is 5.75%. So if we go ahead and we throw our micro center price into this tax calculator, we can figure out roughly how much our tax is. And as you can see, we hit it right on the nose, $1,000.32 for a $1,000 gaming computer, all built from micro center. Now, if we throw our PC part picker list with Amazon prices, now I'm not trying to single out Amazon here because I know Amazon tends to sell from other companies, but as you can see, $56 over budget plus tax made us now go 
$117 over budget in this case. And again, with Micro Center, they have basically all the parts on display for you. You can go, you can hold all the boxes in your hands, you can go look at all of the cases side by side, and if you really want to, you can even pay them to put the system together for you. But if you're like me and you like building the system yourself, you can put that $50 extra towards something else. Whether you have a, an exact hard limit of $1,000, you put it towards the tax. Bam, you now you have a full system. Maybe you were a good boy or girl. You ate your broccoli, you did your chores, and you went to school. Your parents gave you a raise on your allowance. Bam, now you can get $50 worth of games for your brand new computer. Or if you don't have them already, you could put that money towards your peripherals. And if you do end up building this system, take a picture and send it to me. I'm on Twitter, I'll put it down here so you can see it. So I don't really know what the whole point of this video was. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much gonna do it for now. So if you like what you saw, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed below, because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one.